and uh, why we should be <laughs> careful when we design systems. Uh, so there are many examples in the not very recent, uh, not in the very long past, showing that uh, failure in designing systems caused huge problems. For example, the year 2000 uh, problem that we had that everybody were afraid, and uh, maybe more known is the loss of contact with the deep impact uh, shuttle that uh, there was some uh, internal clock that uh, was only 32 bits and it just overflowed, and no contact uh, was like, disrupted. And we have now the IPv4 problem, and so IPv6 is coming in to replace our uh, IP address system. And the goal of this talk is uh, to advocate us to design systems in which we do not assume any like limitation on the system on what's going to happen in the future. And in this talk, I'm going to talk. In this talk, I'm going to uh, discuss this problem in the setting of secret sharing. And in the setting of secret sharing, what's most natural is to not uh, assume that there is some down to the number of players, or maybe the access structure can change with time. Uh, we don't want to uh, bound ourselves to some I don't know, million people. And maybe most importantly is that even if we know some upper bound of the number of people in the world, or we can estimate that in 100 years it will only go, grow by, I don't know, a squared or something, then we don't want to pay for the first person whatever the, our upper bound is. And I'll uh, say a couple more words about it in a few minutes. But that's a very important point. For the first person that we want to share a secret to, we don't want to pay as if there are a million people around. OK. Uh, designing such systems, I'm, I'm not the first to do it. We're not the first to do it. It has been done uh, for 25 years, and maybe 50 years. <laughs> the first example that I know is uh, the example of prefix codes for the integers. It uh, was introduced by Elias in 75, and I'll talk more about what they are. Uh, in the setting of infinite graphs, where uh, nodes and edges are keep, are keep uh, adding to the graph, Moni had a paper with Kahneman and Rudik in 92. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was a paper uh, about something related mm -hmm. in the setting of Bloom filters, and this talk is going to be about secret sharing. So secret chain, what, what it is, we all know, Thank you, thanks to Andre. So there's a bunch of players. There's a, an access structure. There are authorized and unauthorized sets. Um, we distribute the secret to the, to the players, and we get some shares. And what we want is that qualified sets will be, able to, will be able to recover the secret, and unqualified sets won't be able to. And we'll only talk about, about uh, perfect secrecy. Uh, this was introduced by Shamir and Blakely for the threshold case. Uh, and I'll repeat it again because it's super relevant to this talk. How does the threshold secret sharing work? Uh, yeah, it was introduced by, I'll talk about the scheme of Shamir uh, in a paper he called How to Share a Secret. Our paper is called How to Share a Secret Infinitely. Uh, yeah. So the scheme is very simple. You choose some number Q, some prime power Q, which is at least the number of players. Andrew told us it can be at least n and not n plus 1. Uh, and what you do, you choose a random polynomial. Uh, you choose a random polynomial to fix the, the free coefficient of the polynomial to be the secret. And you just give player i the value of the polynomial at point i. That's a very simple scheme. The reconstruction is by some polynomial interpolation. And secrecy follows by a counting argument, which is kind of simple. Um, but notice that before we even started the game, we had to fix the, the field size of the polynomial. We had to fix the q to be at least the number of players in the game. What, we, what happens if we don't know the number of players that's going to participate in the game? And the share size in Shamir's scheme was logarithmic in n, roughly logarithmic in n, for every t. And we also know its type. Okay. So what do we know about standard secret sharing? Essentially, not very much, unfortunately. Our best schemes uh, require shares of exponential size for general access structures. For general access structure, uh, the best we know is how to share the secret such that the shares of uh, every player is exponential in the number of players, which is very bad. Uh, there's an sort of an improvement if you, can, uh, if you can write the access structure as a monotone formula, then you can get something better, which is proportional to the monotone formula size. 
and Karshman and Wigglesdon generalized this to something called monotone span programs. Uh, there was a very recent, pro very interesting progress in that direction, but it's not related to my talk. And of course, the major open question is to prove lower bound for general secret sharing schemes. We have very weak uh, results. Okay, so what is going to this talk about? So we still want to share a secret, but we don't want to assume uh, that we know how many players will participate in the game. We still want qualified sets to be able to recover the secret, and unqualified sets to not know anything about the secret. So the game is as follows. Players will come one by one. Qualified sets, I tell you that the set is qualified only when all the players that participate in the set are, are in the game. We don't want to give you any upper bound on the number of players that, that will, will come. Parties will only be added and not removed. So there's some monotonicity condition. And I don't allow to refresh shares of previous players. Like when I give you a share, you have the share for infinity, and I don't have access to your share anymore in the future. So I give a new share only to the new player that arrives. Otherwise, it's easy. Okay, so that's the game. Any questions? So the first question is even, is it possible? It's not clear a priori that it's possible. And two, if it is possible, what do we pay for not knowing this, uh, this, uh, this number of players ahead of time? Two papers with the same name address uh, problems somewhat related to ours, but not exactly the same thing. Uh, the paper of uh, Christian Kashin from 95 talks about computational setting. So it's very unrelated to our paper. And the paper of Tirmas and Tardosh from five years ago is very related to our paper. It's essentially the same model, but the results are like not very related, except one which I'll mention in a minute. Okay, so these are our results. We show that it is possible to share a secret in our model. Uh, for any access structure, we can share a secret such that the share size of the tth player is exponential in t. For the threshold case, in which at every point in time, every k players uh, can uh, reconstruct the secret, but every k minus one cannot, we get a scheme in which the share size of the tth player is something like k log t. For the two threshold case, we get a very nice uh, term, which looks like log t plus log log t plus log 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 t plus log 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 t, and so on. And a nice example is ST connectivity, which we can generalize from the standard setting without paying anything. So it's still one bit. So, so every time one person uh, joins, you have to refresh the shares for everyone. No, I, I'm not allowed to refresh the shares of anyone except him. I give him a new so share. So this will be the size of the new yes, exactly. Everyone is staying with exactly the same. Exactly. So the first player will get just one bit or something. Okay, so these are the constructions. We have a lower bound. We show that the two threshold scheme is tight, so it cannot be improved. So you have to pay this uh, log log factor and log 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 factor. And maybe most interestingly and related to this uh, award show, we have an equivalence to prefix codes. We show that the two threshold case is essentially the same question as constructing prefix codes. Which is quite nice, quite a nice connection. And I'll talk about it next. Uh, just want to say that for general access structures, the best standard secret sharing we know is also uh, has also shares of exponential size. So essentially we didn't we didn't lose anything. And in the threshold case, uh, we have a, a linear dependence on k, which in the standard setting doesn't exist. So our result for k threshold, where k is larger than 2, is not known to be optimal. For the 2 threshold, it is optimal. So, so yes? Just to be sure, if the first player knows the secret, then every time you include the first player in, in your set, it's great because the first player says, yeah, I don't see Yeah. <coughs> OK. So are the results clear? Questions? So, so if, um, I'm just curious, whose name did 
you how to refresh shares, but would say, uh, you know, of let's say at most of EV companies, but is do the results become significantly more trivial? Or no, I don't. I, I don't know. I guess no, but. Uh, If only log players, uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Okay, so this is it. Uh, so this is what I'm going to talk about. I'll start with the equivalence of prefix codes and two threshold schemes. Then I'll show you a different construction of two threshold schemes, which will be a good uh, warm up for the general construction, which I'm not sure I'm going to get to. Two of uh, two main ideas we have we call domain reduction. And uh, we have something very nice, which we call a formula for the future. Not sure I'm going to get to them, but we'll see. And the construction for general schemes, for general structures, uh, I'm quite positive I won't get to. So yeah. So what is a prefix code? Not sure everybody knows. So a prefix code is just an encoding of the integers uh, in such a way that encoding of every two numbers, none of them is the prefix of the other. It's very useful, apparently, in UTF, uh, like Unicode encoding and uh, in phone numbers. Um, and it was constructed in 75 uh, by Elias. And this is his, the complexity of the encoding. So the encoding of the number t is something we'll call sigma t. It is log t plus log log t plus log 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 t bits. This is the size of the encoding. And our theorem is that if there exists a prefix code, a prefix code in which the code word length is sigma t, then there is a secret sharing scheme for two threshold, in which the share size of the t player is sigma t, and the other way around. Okay. So let's see how it works. It's quite simple. So let's assume we have a, a, a prefix code, sigma, in which the code word length is sigma t. The secret sharing scheme is very simple. The dealer chooses a, a random string w that he's going to make longer and longer and longer as more players come. If he wants, if the secret is zero, then when the teeth player arrives, we give him the prefix of w of length sigma t. And if the secret is one, we give him the same string sword with the teeth code word of the prefix code. Okay. So that's the scheme. It's very simple. Let's see how reconstruction works. Every single player, uh, okay, reconstruction, we need have, uh, two players. So we have two shares. We look if one of them is the prefix of the other. If so, then the secret is zero. If they are not prefix one of the other, then the secret is one. I'll say in a second why it's uh, why it works, but just notice that the share size is exactly sigma t. Okay, so correctness works because we just shifted a, a prefix code by some fixed random string, so it's still a prefix code. And the security you can see it quite easily because every single player just sees a random string. So that's the scheme. That's one direction. The other direction follows by a, a lower bound. Or a secret chain, yeah. Uh, in the size for the prefix code, you put plus dot dot dot. Yeah, so you have to cut it off at some point because because like here it's also dot dot dot, but we have to cut it off at some point. So I just cut it off like after three terms. Uh, okay. Uh, the other direction follows by a lower bound. Essentially, the share sizes have to uh, satisfy some inequality known as Kraft's inequality which characterizes prefix codes. But I'm not going to uh, go into that. So let's see a different scheme for two threshold. And I think I'll uh, end with that. We start with a very simple scheme for two threshold, and then we'll show how to improve it. This scheme was uh, uh, introduced by Tsirmas and Tardos. The first player is given just a random bit. The second player is given a random bit. And uh, the secret sword with the bit of the first player. So both of them can recover the secret, but any one of them doesn't know anything. The, th the third player gets a random bit, th the same random bit that the second player got, and another bit which is the uh, random bit of the second player stored with the secret. And in general, this is what party T gets. And you can easily see that this scheme works. 
and the shared size in this scheme is linear, is t. I promised you logarithmic, and I also obtained logarithmic in the previous scheme, so how do we get to logarithmic? The idea is very nice. Think of these players, one, two, three, four, they come one by one, and there's a secret S. What we want to do first, we first uh, split them into generations, uh, which are growing in size, they will be exponentially, like geometrically increasing in size. Inside the generation, we'll do a standard Shamir secret sharing. We know the size of the generation, so we can share the secret using a standard Shamir scheme. So if two players come from the same generation, they can recover the secret. And now we're only left with how to handle if these two players come, like how do they recover the secret. So we use this naive scheme that I just showed you. We generate one share from the naive scheme and just give it to both player one and two. Another share and give it to three, four, five, and six. Another share and give it to seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and so on. Now these two guys have uh, these two shares. So they can use this scheme and recover the secret. So that's a very nice idea. What's the share size? If you do the computation, you see that the share size is two log p. I promised you log t plus log log t, and so on. And the idea is very nice. It just applies recursively. You do the same construction, but now instead of using uh, the scheme pi zero, you use this scheme as the base scheme. And you get the share size. If you do it like three times, you get log t plus log log t plus two log 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 t. And you can do it as many times as you want. So that's the idea. Why is this scheme any better? It achieves the same sh share size. So I didn't get anything by doing that. But this scheme is linear. The previous one, based on prefix codes, is nonlinear, which is a very nice example of a nonlinear scheme. This is a direct con construction which you, you can easily generalize to larger shares without doing it by, bit by bit, whereas the previous one you have to do it bit by bit. And it is used as a good warm up for our general construction, which I think I don't have time to show. Uh, yeah. This is my idea. I hope you got it. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> So I think the most interesting question is to improve the dependence, the linear dependence on k in our share size. It's k times log t. We don't know how to do it, and there are some more questions here. You can look at them while I'm finishing. Thank you. All right, miraculously, we've finished only one minute late uh, for the session. Um, uh, Let's take a couple of questions uh, for him, but I also want to uh, tell everyone who's going to be presenting in the next session, please come and uh, put your uh, presentations on the laptop so that we can record the, uh, the presentations. Um, any questions for Ilan? Uh, and we reconvene at 11.10. Right, we leave, reconvene at 11.10 where Russell will Sorry to interrupt the flow. Okay, let's thank the speaker. Let's thank all the speakers. Thank you.